Welcome back to another motor control video. In this video we'll perform position control of a motor that has backlash. We will use a dual encoder control approach to reduce that backlash for more accurate position control. So let's get started. Just a little overview of the mechanical backlash in the gearhead. This motor has a gearhead in the front and the backlash basically is a little play that's between two gears inside that gearhead. And this backlash basically causes the angle of the gearhead output shaft to be different from the motor shaft angle. Whenever, especially when the motor reverses direction. To achieve more accurate position control, the backlash should be reduced. One way to do it would be using costly high precision gears. The other way would be using more intelligent control algorithm. Let's look at the diagram for this control. We will start with just the motor, which is our system. With given voltage, the motor will start to rotate and will read the measured angle with using a back-end encoder of the motor and figure out the error in our system. To correct this error, we'll add a PID controller. Now, to correct the position error caused by the backlash, add a second encoder feedback to our system. Simply add a proportional controller to compensate for this backlash error. This is called a dual loop control model, where inner loop runs five times faster than the outer loop. Here is my dual encoder motor demo setup. One encoder at the front end of the gearhead and one encoder at the back end of the motor. And an H bridge driver to drive the motor and Arduino Mega, my controller, and a potentiometer to control the angular position of the motor. Components list and wiring diagram are available on my website. Please check out the description for the link. Let's get started with Arduino code. First thing, let's declare all the variables, timing related variables, some error related integer variables, declare ISR pins, pin two and three for back end encoder, pin 18 and 19 for front end encoder and other variables to store encoder pulses, calculated motor angles, etc. Along with pin declaration for PWM and direction. Inside the void setup function, let's configure all the pins. Start with setting up serial port. We'll keep the baud rate 9600. Then configure encoder interrupt pins as input. Then declare ISR functions for counting encoder pulses. These are the attached interrupt functions. Then configure other digital and analog pins for direction and potentiometer readout. Now let's define the encoder functions. These functions will basically be called every time the ISR interrupts are triggered. So that's defined for each ISR and these encoder functions will count encoder pulses in decreasing or increasing manner depending on the shaft's rotation and store those encoder pulses in encoder count variables. Now let's go to the main function, our void loop function. We'll declare a target variable that will store map analog value from the potentiometer uh, between negative 90 degrees and positive 90 degrees and the encoder count will be divided by a float number to get the theta 2 which is the angular position of the gearhead. So let's define a for loop. This is going to be an inner loop for a control algorithm. We'll calculate theta from encoder count. We'll have our delta t and the error, our target angle which is getting from potentiometer minus the theta. The integration error equation and the voltage. This is our controlling function. This is the voltage that we're going to feed to the motor that has all the PID gains and uh, the error calculation. This piece of code is for an anti windup, integration anti windup. Um, just have that in there. You can watch my other videos if you want to know more about it. And this will be a write voltage function. This will basically write voltage to the driver. We haven't declared it yet so let's go and declare that this basically calculates the PWM value to feed to the motor driver so we can adjust the voltage and control the speed and position of the motor and we'll just have to make sure that we keep track of all the 
angle, the time, so we can get the difference. So in this loop, this is our inner loop. Now let's move on to the outer loop, our error 2, which is from the front end encoder. And this is our another controlling function. So 1.5 is just a proportional gain since we're using only proportional controller times the error. And it will basically send a small amount of voltage every time after the inner loop is complete. So I notice we haven't defined the gain values yet. So we'll go up and declare our gains. So I've already calculated these gains based on the system. It will be different from your system. And we'll also define a Vmax like I'm, I'm feeding 10 volts to it. So we'll just have that in there. And finally, we'll basically print all these values on the serial plotter. And this is just a labeling method in the void setup. And we'll just add a small delay here. And let's try compiling this. And it compiles, we'll upload the code and look at the actual setup. This is our setup with code uploaded. Now I'm powering it with 10 volts externally and plotting it using the serial plotter so we can look at the trajectory. And I'm going to rotate the potentiometer here. And we can see the graph on the plotter change. Let's pause here and look at the plot. The red line denotes the difference between front and back end encoder position. If there was no backlash, it will be zero. However, red line in this case is oscillating around zero degrees. Blue line is our desired target angle and green is front end encoder angle, while yellow is back end motor encoder. In this case, the target line tries to track data 2 to compensate for the backlash. Technically, you can just use front end encoder to control DC motor position. However, other motors like brushless DC motor or st even stepper motors if you want to precisely control their position with the gearhead you would need a dual encoder solution and this basically gives you an idea how to use dual encoder in a system hopefully this video was helpful and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, it will help me make more videos like this and uh, thank you for watching goodbye